Hello everyone. Hope you're having a great day. Uh, it's good to be back with you on this this Monday. Uh, it's just me today. My wife is uh, out of town still, and uh, also, so I'm going to going to revisit the enemies, the heart devotional that we began last week. Uh, some good rich truth that's from the YouVersion app, uh, Bible.com. You can go on there. You can find it uh, on there. You can find all kinds of things on there. Uh, but this this devotional is called Enemies of the Heart. It was done by Andy Stanley. Uh, as you remember, before that, we, we did one on the mind, uh, reset our minds. We need to do that in these days. And, and this follows along right, right along with it as we just move uh, south of just a few inches to our hearts from our, from our minds. Uh, they go together. They go, go really well together. But, but we're talking about some of the things that, that just are enemies to our heart. They're toxic. Uh, we talked about toxic things in our mind, but, but uh, it's a little different when we're talking about things of the heart. Uh, we're talking about more emotions, more deep, more depth, more, uh, you know, those kinds of things. But uh, uh, last last week, we at the end of last week, at the, the last devotional from this that we did, we talked about, about guilt and, and how guilt has a way of building up in us. And it, and it just so does, does such damage to our hearts. It, it causes us to, to not live in all that God wants us to wants us to live, the kind of life he wants us to live. So today we're moving on to uh, another enemy of the heart, and that's anger. Uh, anger is such a big deal. Again, right now, it seems like so many people are angry about so many things, whether it's politics or race or whatever. Uh, you know, I, I think maybe some of that comes just by usual in the summertime with the heat. When the temperature rises there, the, the temperature of our anger goes up as well. But uh, uh, I don't know if that's true or not, but it seems like it is. Uh, so, so uh, we need to deal with it. We need to learn to be better at it. I was reading an article the other day that came on my phone. I, actually, I, I saved it. It was an email. I don't remember who it was from. It was a devotional, but it, it had to do with this very issue of dealing with our anger. And, and uh, it, it was just really profound. And I, I never thought of it like this. And, and basic idea, and it looks at the same passage we're going to talk about as part of this devotional. But the, the idea is we don't have to be offended. We don't have to get angry, you know. As a matter of fact, as Christians, we 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 kind of tend to to think we need to be angry about certain things, and and we think we, you know, uh, we look at the passage we're going to look at now, and we think, well, it says, "In your anger, do not sin." In other words, anger to a certain extent is okay, but we but we shouldn't sin in that, and and that's true. That's very true. There there is an anger, there is a righteous anger, but too often we go there, we don't need to. It, it, we don't have to take offense at things. Uh, that's that's the difference. We can react in love. We can react with grace uh, and, and truth. We stick to truth. But on the other hand, we don't have to be so angry. Uh, I, I'm saving that that devotional because I want to preach preach on it one of these days uh, because it's so powerful uh, to me. It, it it kind of changed my thinking on some of that. And I, I think that's kind of what I uh, what I needed uh, to hear that day. But I, I think it's what I want to share at some point a little more in depth. Uh, with with our church, but but let's dig into this devotional again. It's called "Enemies of the Heart" uh, from Andy Stanley. This is the third day of it, and we're looking at Ephesians chapter four, uh, verses twenty five to thirty two. And I'll read that passage first before we go back to uh, to the devotional part of it. It says, "Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin." Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. If we if we hold on to anger, if we react in anger, if we use anger in any way, really we are giving the devil a foothold, and we don't have to do it. Uh, it's just as simple as that. Anyone who and it goes on verse twenty eight. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, uh, must but must work doing something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. Uh, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. That, that's that's the the ongoing word from from God's word is is we need to get rid of these things uh, these things that are enemies of our heart because all they do is they harm us uh, when we get angry it does no good it, it only hurts ourselves and, and so we need to to forgive others uh, well let's dig into the devotional because I think it, it goes further and helps us understand a little bit more of how to deal with our anger 
The, the title of it is Letting Go of Hurt and Anger. Uh, Stanley says, uh, the second enemy of the heart is anger. We get angry because when we don't get what we want. Isn't that true? We're like a little 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 kid uh, that, that you know <laughs> wants something and they want it now and they throw a little tantrum. I, I never did that when I was younger. Don't ask my parents about that. But anyway, show me an angry person. I'll show you a hurt person. I guarantee you that person is hurt because something has been taken. Somebody owes them something. Uh, when all people, when we all know people whose anger could be verbalized in, in one of the following ways. You took my reputation. You stole my family. You took the best years of my life. You stole my first marriage. You robbed me of my teenage years. You robbed me of my purity. You owe me a raise. You owe me an opportunity to try. You owe me a second chance. You owe me affection. You owe me, you owe me, you owe me. And I, I think that's some of the anger going on in our culture right now is we just think everybody feels in, there's a, we have an entitlement culture and, and people think they're entitled to certain things. And, and, and like I said, I mean that we see that all over the place. And, and, and I'm afraid there's a little bit of that in the church. We, we feel like we're entitled to certain things. We're entitled to you know, whatever. And uh, it, it's caused us to get angry. And, and we, can't, we can't go there. Jesus never went there. And so we need to learn to uh, deal with that. Uh, Stanley says, The root of anger is the perception that something has been taken, something has owed you, and now a debt to debtor relationship has been established. How about you? What debt is causing the anger you feel? How long are you going to allow the people who have hurt you to control your life? And that is so true. When people hurt us, we let them dictate to us how we should respond. You know, we let them how it's going to affect us. We, we allow them to do that to us when we don't have to. We don't have to be offended, as that article said. Uh, how long are we going to let them do it? Another month, another year, another season of your life? How long? Uh, something we need to deal with. We need to learn. It, it's an enemy of our heart. Uh, it's toxic to us. We need to deal with it. He says, I, I'd like to propose that today should be the day when you quit holding on to the hurt. It, it can be today for you, for me, for any, for anyone. Today, life can change. You can begin to, to bring healing to your heart where, where it's been hurt. Uh, he says, what's, what is, what, while it's true that you can't undo what's been done, it's equally true that you don't have to let the past control your future. In Ephesians 4, we're commanded to get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger. We do that by forgiving each other just as Christ and God forgave you. If you've been forgiven by the Lord, uh, there's nothing, you know, you... you <laughs> You, you need to forgive others. Uh, the scripture is very clear that when that happens, when, when, once we've been forgiven by the Lord, we've been forgiven of everything. Uh, we, we need to learn to forgive others just like he, he forgives us, just like he has forgotten uh, our sins. And we don't have to forget when people do stuff against us, but, but we do need to forgive. We need to let it go. Um, he goes on, the remedy for anger is forgiveness. If we hold out waiting to be paid back for the wrongs done to us, we will be the ones who pay. If, on the other hand, we cancel the debts owed to us, we will be set free. We'll know that wonderful feeling of being set free from, from anger, things that make us angry. Uh, usually, I mean, we get angry, we react, and, and usually there's something going on. As he says here, there's some kind of wrong that's, that whether we know it, whether we're aware of it or not, it, 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 it just grabs a hold of us, grabs a hold of our hearts. He says, of the four monstrous forces we're discussing in these devotionals, I believe this one, unresolved anger uh, from intentional or unintentional hurt is the most devastating. Yet in some ways, it's the easiest to overcome. You simply make up your mind to cancel the debt. You decide and declare, you don't owe me anymore. Uh, we can do that. We can get rid of anger in this way. Uh, whether it be someone, you know, a loved one. Often we get the most angry with people that we love uh, the most. And and we, we need to, to be able to let that go, overlook certain things, and, and just uh, let the Lord have it and, and trust him and, and say, you don't owe me anymore. It's been forgiven, so I'm just going to let it go. And, and then this is kind of his uh, application part of this devotional. You know, each day he has something like this. Uh, most of these devotionals do. And, and this is this, follow this four-step process today. Uh, and not just today, for, but for uh, moving forward. It says, number one, identify who you're angry with. Uh, who is it you're angry with? What is causing you? And it may not be the person that you're getting angry with at that moment. It may be something else. It may be, you know, something happened at work and then you go home and you take it out on your kids. It may be something else, you know. Identify who or what you're angry with. Number two, determine what they owe you. In other words, how have you been wronged? 
what what are you you know what are you dealing with what 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 has the other person done to you to make you so angry uh, number three it says cancel the debt by forgiving them uh, whatever debt you owe or is owed to you uh, forgive that cancel the debt uh, just say in your mind in your heart and, and truly mean it that you are forgiving that debt and then number four don't let the anger build up again uh, don't let it don't let it come back let it go truly let it go if you do that you will find freedom you will find uh, grace you'll find uh, joy uh, you'll find peace you'll find all these things that these things of your heart that your heart needs not these enemies but they need they need the well fruit of the spirit and among other things uh, that the Lord wants you to have in your heart, not not the enemies. Well, let's pray together before we go. Lord, we thank you for uh, for this lesson on uh, anger. Lord, help us not to be an angry people. Help us as Christians to to not uh, look around our culture and get angry at every little thing, uh, politics or race or whatever. But but to just focus on you. To let these things go. We don't have to be offended. Uh, Lord, remind us of that fact. We don't have to get angry. We we can we can be filled with grace and truth and and love and joy and and all these good things. And we cannot let this anger uh, be an enemy of our heart to be toxic to our souls. Uh, Lord, it's so important that we get a hold of this, especially in this day and age. And I don't know this political season. We're getting closer to another big election. And and Lord, I, I just pray that you will help us all to be who you want us to be, who we need to be. Uh, we, we can do that. We can choose grace. We can choose joy. Lord, help us in that. Uh, thank you. Continue to be with those that are, are having health issues, uh, the coronavirus and other things. And you know, we, we have several uh, in our church, related to our church, dealing with cancer. Lord, we just ask that you would touch them, be near to them, uh, be with doctors, nurses, first responders. Lord, just uh, encourage them, give them strength each and every day. Help them. I know it's got to be uh, so tiring, so rough to, to be going through this every day. And I, I just pray that you would help them, the, the uncertainty of it all. Uh, be with us all. Help us to do what we need to do. Be with our leaders, Lord. Bring unity, uh, especially in, with uh, issues of race, Lord. Uh, bring healing. Uh, again, return us to uh, uh, you know, joy and peace, Lord. You you are the one that can do that. You, we need revival. We need your spirit to, to come and, and uh, speak to hearts. Uh, thank you, Lord, for what we trust you're going to do. And Lord, again, just, just work in us to help us deal with these issues of anger that we have in our souls and our hearts. Uh, it's not healthy, and we, we just need to deal with it. We need to find, uh, find your, your love, your mind, your heart. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, have a great rest of your day, and we'll be back tomorrow with uh, another one of these devotionals. Hopefully Wednesday we'll get my wife back so that she can uh, uh, do a, a hymn for us, but, uh, but we'll see. Uh, have a great day. Bye-bye.